Hello, and welcome to World Cup Fever 1966. This program looks back at that glorious day, the 30th of July 1966, and England's sensational World Cup victory against West Germany. Some 40 years ago now, but it still remains England's greatest ever sporting achievement. Standing here in the 21st century, 1966 seems a long time ago now, and yet many things from that time are still relevant today. It was a time when London was the swinging capital of the world, the time of the Beatles and miniskirts, of the Vietnam War and Harold Wilson. So let's have a look back and see what was making the news in 1966. For most people, the war in Vietnam came to represent the political side of the 60s. It provided iconic images. Color pictures were sent across the world and seen in cinemas and homes. Never before had the audience at home been so involved with the war in a foreign country. 1966 was the year in which the American troop buildup really began eventually reaching more than half a million men on the ground. Although many countries, including Britain, stayed far away from the conflict, this year saw Australia sending a large contingent of troops to the war zone. 
Harold Wilson is seen here as he returned to number 10 after the Labour victory at the general election in 1966. He had consolidated his control over Parliament with a majority of 96. And yet, his feeling of triumph would be short-lived, as economic problems that would plague the country for nearly 20 years were just around the corner. In 1966 saw the beginning of the Cultural Revolution in China under the leadership of Chairman Mao Zedong. This political experiment set out to destroy the influence of the educated class on Chinese life. The movement sent out masses of little red book-waving fanatical students known as the Red Guard across the country, where they did their best to break down the remaining structures of Chinese society with evangelical fervor. Leonid Brezhnev became leader of the Soviet Communist Party in 1966. He took the new title of General Secretary for himself and with it came leadership of the communist world. As a Soviet leader, he lacked the charisma of his predecessor Khrushchev, but nevertheless, he was to become the face on the other side of the Cold War. In January, Indira Gandhi became Prime Minister of India, the world's largest democracy. Mrs. Gandhi, who shared a surname with the man who brought India its independence, was actually the daughter of the first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Nehru. She served as Prime Minister twice, the first until 1967, and then again from 1980 to 1984, when she would be assassinated. 1966 was the year that must have broken the hearts of teenage girls around the world, as Beatle George Harrison became the third of the Fab Four to take a bride. Only Paul McCartney was still single, as George married Patty Boyd on the 21st of January at Leatherhead and Escher Register Office in Surrey. In the summer of 1966, when Germans were invading England for the World Cup, the Beatles went the other way and played Munich. The locals predictably went mad for the Fab Four. thousand delirious Deutsche teenagers and one old man had paid up to four pounds each to undergo emotional demolition. This year sees the beginning of an illustrious political career for Hollywood actor Ronald Reagan when he wins the Republican nomination to stand for election to the post of Governor of California. He went on to win the election with a majority of over a million votes. Later, he would become one of America's most popular presidents. It's one thing to lose the World Cup. It's quite another to lose it literally, but that is what happened. The solid gold Jules Rimet trophy was stolen in March when it was on show at Westminster Hall. The country's blushes were spared, thanks to Pickles the dog, who found it wrapped in newspaper in a garden. Here he is seen receiving the award. I'm sure if he'd known how much the trophy was worth, he would have asked for more than a medal and a bone. In 1966 was the year that legislation allowing the random use of the breathalyzer was passed. When compared to efficient digital machines of today, the process seems unwieldy, but it served its purpose and Britain's roads were undoubtedly safer after its introduction. One of the most famous and long-lasting modern military fighter aircraft produced in this country 
the Harrier Jump Jet was unveiled at the Farnborough Air Show this year. This truly unique and amazing aircraft, with its ability to take off and land vertically, captured the imagination of people all over the world. It is a testament to the Harrier's designers that the plane is still in service some 40 years later. In 1966, the space race was on and the American space program was in full flight. People around the world were thrilled by the constant stream of technical innovations, transforming science fiction into science fact. Here we see astronaut Buzz Aldrin taking an afternoon stroll through space. Seriously, this Gemini spacewalk mission was to prove invaluable experience when Aldrin became the second man on the moon after Neil Armstrong. In 1966, there were concerns that this might be the last ever Grand National. However, these concerns proved unfounded. On the day, it had been raining all morning at Aintree, and the riders were prepared for heavy going. Of the 47 starters, only 12 were to cross the finishing line. There were no fallers at the first, with Willow King and Forrest Prince, number six, in the lead. At beaches, packed home fails to get home, and Popham Down lives down to his name. Popham Down looked down for good, till he suddenly popped up again. At the 19th, it was still Forrest Prince in the lead. And with just two fences, there was a late challenge from Tim Norman on number 22, Anglo. Out of the last fence, it's Anglo from Forest Prince. It's Anglo who leads on the last soul-destroying, lung-shattering run for the finish. 50 to 1 Anglo pulls ahead from the rest of the field and wins the 1966 Grand National by 20 lengths. With his name well known today as being associated with Formula One from a technical standpoint, it was in 1966 that Australian Jack Brabham, number three, won the world motor racing title in a car of his own design, the BT-19. He's the only driver to have won the championship in a car he designed. Later, Brabham would receive a knighthood for his services to motorsport. In 1966, at the famous Indianapolis Motor Speedway, it's time for the Indy 500. Almost from the start, there was a huge coming together. A car hit the wall and rebounded into the rest of the field. Car after car piled into each other, and burning oil and fuel covered the racetrack. There were three British drivers in this gruelling 500-mile race. Jim Clark, Graham Hill and Jackie Stewart, the last two driving Ford Lolas. One by one, the cars and their drivers retire. Stewart had gone eight laps from the end, favourite Mario Andretti earlier. And here's Hill, racing in to take the chequered flag. Hill wins on his first appearance at Indianapolis. A great victory for Britain. This year's FA Cup final was between Everton and Sheffield Wednesday. Sheffield are in the chain strip of white and Everton kick off. 
It's a battle between youth and experience. Youthful...